thanks a lot for the, for the opportunity to present our interim results here. Um, and thanks for the nice introduction. I'm here together with my colleague Doris Gruber. Uh, she is the main historian working on the project that we will be shortly presenting. And uh, yeah, I'll just directly start with the presentation. So as you probably all know, artificial intelligence is rapidly advancing text and image classification in many disciplines. With the progressing digitization of cultural heritage, AI increasingly also finds application in arts and humanities. But what we are interested in exploring is how can these quantitative methods support historical research and historical research questions? And how does AI impact the underlying epistemologies stemming from more traditional historical methods? These questions are highly relevant in the project called Ottoman Nature in Travelogues, for short on it. The goal of our project is to analyze representations of nature in travel accounts on the Ottoman Empire. So concretely, we are looking for representation of flora, fauna, landscapes, and maps in both the images and the texts of these travelogues. And of course, to do this, um, to support us with the large corpus uh, that we're working with, we are trying to develop and explore AI-driven methods for the analysis of these two media, and especially in the end then of the project of uh, comparing or analyzing image text relations in these digitized historical prints. Just very briefly about the ONIT project. Uh, it started last year, so basically we are now around at the end, or nearly at the end of the first project year. Uh, two more years uh, we have still to go, so um, I'm really presenting uh, first uh, results here. Uh, and it's funded by the Austrian Science Fund as well as was the previous project, which was called Travelogs, and indeed the corpus that we are working with uh, was basically grounded or based uh, in the previous project. And uh, Travelogs was concluded in 2021. Our sources, as I've already told you, are travel accounts of journeys to the Ottoman Empire, and what is important for us is that these travels actually took place. Uh, at the moment, we have collected more than 1,500 of these travel accounts, and the corpus uh, includes multilingual texts. Uh, German, English, French, and Latin are the biggest portion. Then we have also some Turkish and other language in a small subcorpus. Uh, all the travelogues were printed in books, so it's early book prints, uh, between 1501 and 1850. During the first project year, our main focus was really the image analysis and more concretely, image classification. Uh, the scopes clearly uh, are both for the historical analysis, but now was mainly the main focus really to create uh, a training corpus that we can use to train a machine learning algorithm. In scope of this representation, I can only give you a very short yeah, overview of, of the working progress um, and of some of the results later on. So what you can see here in the image uh, are the images from this corpus that we have automatically extracted with Illustration Detector, which is a tool developed by the Visual Geometry Group at the University of Oxford. And to uh, get the images that are relevant for us, so mainly the images that contain nature depictions, uh, we had first to go manually through them and then uh, agree on a vocabulary to annotate those, to annotate a small subcorpus. Uh, and yeah, the main goal really was to create a viable training data set for uh, machine learning. But of course, um, yeah, during this process, uh, we had a lot of discussions and realized that actually for the historical analysis, yeah, um, another uh, grand, grand level of granularity is needed. So I'll tell you a bit more about that later on. Um, the vocabulary that we agreed to use is icon class, which is a, a standard vocabulary that is used in art history and history for annotating images. And um, noted on the right side, you can see the four main classes that we agreed to use for this machine learning uh, data set that we have prepared. 
So these four classes, um, we decided to limit it to these to um, make it a bit a simpler um, problem or a, a simpler machine learning task. Uh, also because until now we have annotated a bit more than 400 images. So it's quite a small corpus still. Of course, we plan to uh, uh, annotate more with the time. Uh, at the moment, we really just have annotated pictures from the 16th century. And the result is that we have 234 representations of animals, 100, 177 of plants, vegetation, 167 landscapes, and 22 maps. So as you can see, it's a highly imbalanced data set. And yeah, we have already done some first experiments for, uh, yeah, for multi-label classification task with it. Of course, um, we tried to limit the annotation to representations of these classes uh, with just distinct visual features. So um, I will show a an, ex an example a bit later on, but basically we really tried to choose the images that we thought that the algorithm really is capable also of recognizing the pixels that are relevant for the class that we're interested to uh, recognize. Uh, what we also did is um, uh, include also bounding boxes on this small corpus uh, for a later object attestation task that we also have in the project. Right. Also, what I forgot to mention is that uh, we have already published the first version of this data set on our GitHub page. So uh, you, uh, I will uh, show you then later on the link uh, where you can find it. What can we conclude from that? Our experiences so far showed that AI introduces new forms of heuristics and that we really were forced to rethink traditional approaches or the approaches that we were used to work with before for historical image annotation. So I've already told you that we realized that another data granularity is needed. Um, and to create this training data set, we really had to think what are the representations of nature that can also be machine readable, basically, and uh, as opposed to those that need some interpretation. I want to show you here an example. Um, who of you can spot a representation of a plant in these four images. So um, there are definitely some small representations of plants. And of course, for a historical uh, or for an, a data set that is annotated for historical research purposes, we would annotate those as plants as well. But of course, for the machine learning training data set, this would just be misleading. So we're dealing with a multi-label classification problem. And um, we need to make sure uh, for the data set to be as balanced and as complete as possible, um, not to have too many of the same classes on the, uh, sorry, too many of the classes that we're interested to recognize on the same image. So this is really, uh, basically this recognition was the result of our uh, discussion processes while annotating the data set. To conclude, we think that the AI-driven approach forces us to think out of the box and that it enables us to widen the traditional historical methods to deal uh, with the growing data corpora and also the required distant reading methods. However, for the interpretation of the data in the end, we think that close reading and traditional methods are still very important. So from our experience so far in the project, we don't think that our AI is as a disruptive process, but more like an maybe a necessary evolutionary step that helps widening historical methods and also widen up the research scopes. Uh, important open question that remains, of course, especially if we think then of the historical work and the interpretation that is more qualitative, um, how or if, if at all, can AI-supported methods provide support for hermeneutic question answering and reasoning? And in the remaining two project years, this is something that we want to explore as well. That was it from my side. Thank you so much for your attention. Here you find the links to uh, one, the uh, Austrian National Library's OPAC system, where you can search our um, corpus, and uh, the GitHub page, uh, where you can find the first uh, extracted image data set. 
Thank you so much.